Hey everyone, so today I am going to be talking about um, a number of different medical procedures that you would typically get with uh, anesthesia, le local or general anesthesia, um, and the choice to have them done without any anesthesia. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about four procedures specifically because they're the procedures that I have had done, and obviously I can speak to them um, and I'm going to kind of compare the procedures because I when I was doing the research for mine and trying to understand like how bad is it compared to like what I've already had done I couldn't find a lot of information so hopefully this will help people in their quest to um, possibly have a procedure done without anesthesia and whether it's just by choice or if it's because you're allergic or whatever so I've had four procedures done that are typically given with sedation um, I've had them done without and that is um, wisdom teeth extraction, colonoscopy, endoscopy, and a hysteroscopy with uh, dilation curatage, otherwise known as DNC. And I actually had the DNC done today, um, like six hours ago. So um, that one's the most fresh in my memory, and I was kind of like waiting until this procedure before I did the video, so I would really have something to compare. <coughs> and I have a little bit of a cold. So forgive me if I sound kind of nasally and I'm like having trouble breathing. <laughs> okay. So the wisdom teeth extraction, I will I'll kind of give you the background on each situation as well so you know why I was having the procedures done and kind of like what my medical situation was. So for the wisdom teeth extraction, I had two wisdom teeth on my bottom jaw. Um, for whatever reason, I never had any develop on the top jaw, so I only had two, and when I was about 19 years old, I was in a lot of pain and having issues with them, and um, my dentist at the time like gave me a, a, mer a referral to like emergency um, oral surgeon or something, and they were like, you have to get these removed now, they're going to get affected, and so on and so forth. I was absolutely terrified of getting it done so I just never got it done so for 10 years I had these teeth every few months they would try to come through and they I, they would put me in a lot of pain they would develop cysts on the tooth and like where it was trying to come where it was trying to erupt eventually they did partially erupt on both sides um, and when they started erupting that's when I started getting a lot more of the cysts and things like that so I actually had a whole co-worker at the time who was a little bit older than me and he had very similar experience with like putting them off, putting them off, and then like having them get to a point where they were so painful. And I'm like, wow, you're still experiencing pain after all these years and they're still trying to come in? He's like, yeah. My hope was that eventually they would just give up <laughs> and they would just like, oh, we're not going to come out. So apparently that doesn't happen. So if you've been putting off your wisdom teeth extraction, um, I would recommend get it done. They say if you get it done before 30 years old, it is a lot easier healing time and it's a lot less uh, uh, room for complications. So I was, I think I was like 29, maybe 30 at the time when I had my wisdom teeth extracted and I made the decision because of my coworker's experience and him getting them done and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm going to do it too. So I decided not to get sedated, but they did. I went into the room. It was crazy because like when I even called to make the appointment, I had never been to this oral surgeon before. Never, I wasn't referred to them. I just, this was the place that my coworker went to. So they were just like, okay, yeah, we'll schedule you on this day to get them done. And I was like, uh, don't you need like a consult first? And they was like, oh no, we'll do that when you get here. And I'm like, you don't have to look at my records. You don't have to see me. I was very concerned, but they were like, no. And I get to the office and um, I was a little nervous about the office because they had, I guess it was like a pet friendly office and I'm like, that can't be sanitary. <laughs> But they did an amazing job. So so I get there and they have me go back in the area. They explain everything to me. Um, the whole time I thought that my wisdom teeth were not impacted, that they were just like soft tissue impacted, but the oral surgeon informed me that they were actually impacted into the jawbone as well. So they, uh, so at that point, you know, I'm just finding this out and I'm about to have this procedure and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I've watched so many videos of this being done and how it's more complicated with the bone extract um, impaction. So nonetheless they get me into the chair they explain everything to me they let me know that if I do decide that I want some sort of additional pain relief or sedative um, gas whatever it is available to me so they did have it available to me but they just gave me the regular like Novocaine shots that they would if you were getting a filling and they proceeded to extract my teeth it took I would say five to seven minutes tops for both sides like he was in here Maybe one to two minutes, if that, cutting away, 
taking it out. I mean, I didn't know what was happening. So I just knew he was in there doing something. And then all of a sudden I see him like pull a tooth out and like say, oh, there's that one. And I'm like, what? Already? I was like, dang. So then he gets over the side. Now there was a few times that it is a little bit traumatic because they're like pushing and pulling on your face. At one point, like the way that my jaw was, I was like, they're about to break my jaw. I had to like try to push my jaw back the other way so they wouldn't break it. Um, Because they're just digging in there trying to get the tooth. There's some noises that probably aren't like the best but I didn't think it was that bad he gets over to the other side cuts pops that one out and that was it I walked back out into the waiting room my husband was like wow that was fast and I was like yeah it wasn't that bad and I they gave me some like ice stuff to put on my cheeks and I took I think I might have taken a Tylenol like a regular strength Tylenol when I got home and that was it that was the only pain medicine that I took um the num nummy medication wore off throughout the day it was sore for sure um it was definitely sore and for a few days while it was healing I was very nervous about getting like um empty socket or whatever it's called so I was I was very careful about how I was eating things and not sucking on anything and and they did stitch mine up because there was such a huge hole that they stitched it up. So he told me I wouldn't really have that much concern of a dry socket, not empty socket, dry socket. He told me I wouldn't have that much concern, but um, I was still nervous. So I was being very careful. And it was right before Thanksgiving, so I was like struggling when it came time to eat. Because there was so much good food and I was just had to be so careful. But no complications. Um, it wasn't an issue at all. Like I would totally, absolutely, 100% have that procedure done again without being sedated or going under or anything um okay so the next thing that I had done was an endoscopy and colonoscopy and I had this done because I was experiencing a lot of nausea and I wasn't I wasn't able to eat I lost my appetite I was losing weight I was having like this very kind of raw burning especially in the middle of the night I would just wake up and feel like right in the pit of my stomach like right here I would just feel like it's burnt like it's just on fire it's just raw feeling and gnawing feeling so at first they were like okay well you probably have like an ulcer or something and they had me taking this um I want to say like Prilosec or something like it's they weigh whatever my doctor gave me he way over prescribed um but I was scared and I really wanted this feeling to go away and I wanted my appetite back so I was like taking it but then they had a hemocult I think it's called a hemocult um or I'm sorry, a fecal occult, a fecal occult um, to see if I had any blood in my stool, and I did. I don't know if that was accurate or a mistake or what, but so they decided to do the colonoscopy and endoscopy. Okay, <clears throat> so my um, gastroenterologist informed me that he and his entire experience, and he was older, so I'm sure he's had a lot of experience, had only had um, like two other gentlemen had the procedure done without being put out for it, and they were bigger bigger guys and what he explained to me is that when you're a smaller frame individual the curves around your intestine um, make the procedure much more painful because it's just tighter and the corners are tighter so he said you know you probably wouldn't be my first pick for a candidate to do it without but if you're really motivated we can so I was very motivated so he said okay of course you know I get to the to get to the day of the surgery and they had the anesthesiologist come in and talk to you anyway and they were like really like are you sure and like try to talk me into it but I was like no I'm good I'm good I'm good so um, they they do the endoscopy and the colonoscopy right together like they do the endoscopy first and then the colonoscopy so for the endoscopy they roll well for the whole thing they roll me into it's a full-on surgical room a huge surgical room with all of the different equipment and the cameras and the TVs and the lights and it was it's very intimidating because you get rolled back you have all these people all this equipment this big room it's, it's very intimidating and then they move you from one bed to the next bed and so I get another bed um, and they get everything set up they sprayed my throat with kind of kind of like the numbing spray that if you've ever used if you had a sore throat or something so they sprayed my throat with a numbing spray and they explained to me what they were going to do and how long it was going to probably take and all that. Um, and they started with the endoscopy first and so they stuck this tube down my throat that's like a camera, I think it serves as a dual purpose, like it's like a camera and if they need to take any samples they can do it from there as well. Um, so stuck the tube down my throat. Now you have gag reflex so regardless you're gonna so the whole time I'm like <clears throat> I mean 
I couldn't control it. And I wasn't throwing up because you'll have to fast and you have to um, clean every, your whole system out. You can't eat or anything. And whatever you do eat or drink, you're like pooing out the, the other end. So I didn't have anything to get sick. But having that tube down my throat the whole time, I'm, I'm just, my reflexes are going off. So I'm laying there and I have tears coming down my eyes, not because necessarily I'm crying or it's painful, but just because I'm like that reflex is I'm basically dry heaving the whole time. And I'm like, oh shit, like I'm thinking I'm going to put up some fluid and it's, I'm going to swallow it and I'm going to breathe it in and I'm going to be freaking choking on my own fluids. Anyways, I was like thinking about it. I was like freaking out. But <clears throat> I think that... While not very painful, it's a very um, kind of traumatic experience just because of like the dry heaving and then having it down your throat and feeling out of control and not really being able to, I don't know, do anything. Um, but I was able to watch the whole thing on the monitor and he explained to me what everything was. Like this is your this, this is your stomach, this is um, everything looks good, blah, 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 whatever. So that was good that, you know, he was talking to me. He was very, he was very, very good the whole time. Um, and then once they finished with that, I was like, oh, thank goodness. And I was like, okay, if I get through that, I feel like I can get through anything. They pull this tube out and then they go in the other end. So, with a different tube. So they went in the other end um, for the colonoscopy and for, you know, most of us are used to that being a one-way exit. Um, so to have something entering and exploring was very uncomfortable. It kind of feels like you're pooping, like it's that same feeling around the anus, I guess. But then the little tube continues to go in there. It wasn't too bad. It was a little uncomfortable. But he told me, like, the first and second turn, he said, okay, it's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable and a little bit more. Now, I will say, I think the second turn of my intestine, it got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I was just like, I, I literally was just, hold on a minute, because I was, like, kind of moaning out in pain, and I was just like, hold on. And I was thinking, like, what do I do? Because at this point, it's too late to do the, like, any type of anesthesia or whatever like it's too late I either have to stop the procedure or I have to move on with the procedure and I'm like I've already gotten this far so I have to go through with it but I literally don't know if I can go through with it anymore at this time so I was like hold on a minute I'm thinking all this through and I was like you know what I was like I told him I was like just fuck it just go ahead he's like are you sure I'm like yeah just go ahead so then he did it and I I whelped out or yelped out in pain like it it hurt and the pain I think is because it's they put air in there so that they can open up and they can move the tube and see it so you're feeling a lot of gas and pressure build up and for me it literally felt like the air like I had so much gas in my stomach that I felt like I was just gonna explode and I was like oh my god is that even possible has that ever happened <laughs> so I'm like having all these crazy thoughts going through my mind but meanwhile he's telling me the whole time okay this is what this is everything looks great we're just gonna turn around this corner it's got this many more minutes left he was so awesome um and and I, so I just, you know, held in there, we're almost done. Um, and I realized, and this is going to sound kind of gross, but I realized about midway through the colonoscopy that if you kind of push some of that air out, meaning you fart <laughs> while this thing is inserted <laughs> into your bum, um, it helps relieve some of the pressure and it makes the whole process easier. So I asked him, I was like, is that okay if I like let some out? He's like, oh yeah. And I was like, okay. And then so I just started like... <laughs> I just started letting it out like crazy and I was just pushing so hard to get all that air out and I was like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry excuse me he was like oh no are you kidding me that's fine like that's what we want to hear <laughs> so if you ever get the colonoscopy done without any type of anesthesia just know that if you're able to push some of that air out it definitely helps relieve some of the pressure and pain and cramping that you experience um, so after he was done, took everything out, and I didn't, I wasn't uncomfortable after that. Like, I mean, my throat from having the tube down, which you would normally get with anesthesia anyways if you had a breathing tube. Um, I had a little bit of soreness, but my stomach, like my butt, my, like everything, I was A1. I didn't feel anything. Um, the rest of the day, I was just ready to go. Like, I said, let's go get something to eat. Let's go on about our business. And I did, and there wasn't any, like, really recovery. Um... And they ended up really just finding that I had a chronically inflamed stomach. So basically anytime I'm stressed out or if I eat in certain foods or take like Motrin and stuff, then my stomach can kind of flare up and cause me to have that gnawing pain or cause me to lose my appetite and things like that. But there was nothing in my colon or whatever that they could find because they did do a few biopsies. 
So, so that's that. Now, for the D and C and hysteroscopy, I told myself I am not going to freak out about this. I'm going to go through with it. I'm going to be okay. And I was fine up until like, I don't know, maybe like 36 to 40 hours before the procedure. I started freaking out and like watching a bunch of videos and doing a whole bunch of research and like just nervous. And I did not sleep for a crap last night. I just kept waking up in the middle of the night like, oh my God, is it time? Oh my God, is it time? Oh my God, is it time? Like I was freaking out. I don't know why. I was just so nervous because online I just read everybody either had horror stories like it is the most traumatic awful experience you will ever have and they should not be able to do that with to you without any type of um like sedation and then there's other people like it's not that big of a deal so I don't know what to expect but I'm thinking like worst case scenario oh my gosh like it is going to be the most traumatic experience of my life <clears throat> so this is the procedure that I had today so I Woke up this morning, I had to be at the hospital, and it pit, and it made me mad because when they called to do, like, my pre-surgery, like, intake stuff, they were like, oh, yeah, and the sedation, this, and I was like, no, I'm not getting sedated. She was like, yes, you are, and I was like, no, I'm not, and then she's like, well, have you, have any had any, uh, have you ever had any other procedures done? And I told her, yeah, I've had a colonoscopy and endoscopy with some teeth extraction. She's like, oh, well, then you've been sedated. No, I haven't. She made me mad. So, <clears throat> I kept having to like tell people like we are not I'm not getting anything I'm not getting anything and if you guys can't do it without anything I don't want it done so um same thing with the hospital this morning I had to be there at 7 a.m. the procedure was supposed to start at 9 a.m. I got there at 7 they're like oh, okay so we're gonna it kept talking about anesthesia and I'm like I'm not getting any you guys are making me so mad I'm about to leave <laughs> like I was so frustrated so um Apparently, my doctor had wrote with sedation just in case I wanted some that would be available to me because they have to schedule them. Um, and that way, if I decide at the last minute, okay, I can't do it without it, I need it, then at least they would be scheduled and ready to go. So, so it was cool. Everything ended up working out. So, I got there at 7, checked in. The whole check-in process at the hospital was very smooth. Went in, gave my information. They sent me to another waiting room. I waited for a few minutes. They sent me back to, like, my hospital bed area where I like had to get changed and that's when I got to meet like the nurses the doctor and everybody who was going to be working with me um all that was smooth cool they were like are you sure like I've never done like the nurses and um even the anesthesiologist I've never done this without like a um I've never done this procedure without somebody getting sedated are you sure like yeah so the anesthesiologist made me feel comfortable she was like you seem very motivated I think you'll be just fine I appreciate that Okay, so time came for me to go back to the surgery room. And again, very, very intimidating because, like, I had to have it in the hospital. Um, and so, like, the whole wheeling the bed back into the room and you get into this huge surgery room with all this equipment and these TV monitors and people and there's, like, all this surgical equipment. I was like, this is so intimidating. But my doctor was amazing. And um, the staff, everybody, the nurses, all the, like, supporting staff, they were so awesome. They were so cool. We were cracking jokes, talking to each other. They kept me very updated and informed the entire time. I'm so grateful for them. So get into there. They switched me over to the bed. The whole time they're explaining to me what they're doing. They had like this seat belt kind of strap. The bed is like, you're probably not going to go anywhere. We just got to make sure, you know, you stay on the table. So strap me in, put a blood pressure cuff, taking my vitals and things like that. Um, they have you put your legs up in these stirrups and they're not even like the stirrups you get when you go to the woman doctor, the OBGYN. Like they are like your legs are hanging in the air so my knees of course are like this and she's like can you like you know let them relax a little bit and I'm like okay so I open them a little bit and she's kind of she's like you gotta let them so I'm like oh my god and they're like shaking so my legs are like shaking like crazy like I'm about to lose my virginity or something just going crazy because <laughs> I'm like this is so ugh. Oh, I don't know just like to be that exposed and vulnerable Nonetheless, she explains to me, okay, we're going to clean you out. So they take like these iodine soak sponges and they clean your entire outside of the area down there, your bottom and all that area. And then she's like, okay, so we're going to take this like cotton and clean the inside. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, she basically like put the cotton in my vagina, but then it like, I don't know if you, if you've ever used, if you're a woman and you've ever used any sort of birth control, like a Nuva ring or a menstrual cup or anything, you know how it kind of like pops into place. So she was like putting it in there and the sponge just like kind of popped in there and I was like, oh, and she's like, oh, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just didn't realize it was going to like pop in there like that. And so she cleaned it out. It, it didn't hurt. It was just, I didn't, I was surprised. So cleaned everything out inside and out with the iodine stuff, took it all out. And she's like, all right, so I'm going to insert the speculum. It's a little bit different than what we use at the doctor's office. She did that. And then she explained she was going to put a clamp on um, to hold my cervix in place. They have these sheets that they put above you, kind of like if you've ever had or seen someone who's had a C-section. So it's like this big blue sheet. You can't see what they're doing in front of you. 
but I was able to see the TV monitor up on my left hand side and um, for the hysteroscopy I could see everything that they was that they were doing so anyway so she's got the clamp on my cervix so okay we're gonna have we're gonna do like four shots and I I want to say it's lidocaine I could be wrong but I, I'm, I'm pretty positive it's 1% lidocaine and they did like 20 milligrams so it's like five in each area of your cervix so like one on the bottom one on the top and one on either side of like five milligrams of the one percent lidocaine I think so this is the part I was kind of scared about because a lot of people online said like oh my god like it it hurts so bad it's like the worst part and like some people compared it to getting an injection in your mouth when you're getting a, a tooth extraction or cavity field so I was a little nervous about this but honestly like that didn't even hurt like I mean it hurt don't get me wrong it was like it doesn't feel good if somebody's sticking a needle in your cervix but it wasn't like I was like oh that's what happened I literally I had so I had like a little stress ball I was laying like this and it kind of tilts you downwards so your head's down and your bottoms up a little bit so I had my head but I had my arm behind my head with my little stress ball and I was like squeezing it just in case and I'm looking over to the left at the TV screen and so I was like ah like that and they're like okay we're gonna do another one they told me every time they were gonna do it so I was like all right cool I know what to expect but like they did not hurt especially like the by the time we got to the second third and fourth one it did not hurt like it was like I uh, wasn't the best thing in the world but it wasn't that bad at all so I'm like all right cool we got through that let's see let's see what the rest got in store <laughs> so at that point they go to dilate your cervix so they put these little rod kind of things in to dilate it a little bit more she did it and then she put the hysteroscopy the camera in there and um I, at this point I can see on the, on the screen what they're doing and so she's like we're gonna see how far we can get with this so now I'm gonna have to take it back out and dilate just more they couldn't get the camera far enough in my uterus so they had to pull it back out and then dilate me some more put the camera back in there this was um, a little crampy not really painful and I was really interested in what was on the screen and they were talking and so I had a lot enough going on to distract me where I wasn't like oh my gosh um, so I went in there looked around she showed me like this opening to the left fallopian tube this opening to the right fallopian tube this is like this this is that and looked around um everything was cool so she's like all right good everything looks really normal and good i don't see anything to be concerned and so um she took the camera out and she was like all right so we're almost done now we're just gonna do the curatage because i asked her i was like is it even if everything looks normal is it even necessary to do the curatage part and she was like yeah we're still gonna do it we're already in here and make sure we get everything done so i was like all right i was trying to kind of hoping to get away from that maybe um but so then when they did the curatage part, I wasn't able to see because obviously there was no camera. So it was just me chilling there like, okay, they said they're going to do it. But I don't know how many scrapes she's doing. I'm, I'm not seeing the tool. I don't, I hated that I couldn't see past the blue screen. I was like, I was like, can I just like lower this sheet? Um, but so I guess they went in there with like the little curatage tool, which is like a metal loopy spoon looking thing. Um, and they scrape the inside of your uterus out and then they take all of those samples to be tested so this part was the most painful and <clears throat> I would say yeah it was painful I have really bad really bad period cramps every month so for me I was like honestly it wasn't that much worse than my period cramps it was worse but not it felt like going into labor like your uterus is contracting or painful or whatever so it felt like so I still I had my ball and I did I was like oh fucking shit like I said Ella said a few curse words and I was like I'm so sorry for cussing <laughs> I was just like it it's uncomfortable it hurts um but I didn't cry I didn't like move or jolt off the table I didn't um like moan in pain I didn't want them to stop or anything I mean there was a point where she was like okay I just want to make sure I get everything out so we don't have to redo this in the future and I literally to me it felt like like when you scrape the inside of a pumpkin you're like you're just like getting the, that's how it felt to me that she was just in there like just like scraping the inside of a pumpkin and it was crampy and uncomfortable and painful but it honestly I would do that again in a heartbeat and not in a heartbeat not like oh I'm gonna sign up for fun but if I had to have it done I would hands down okay I'm doing it without any sedation 100% um literally the most painful part which is that curatage part lasted all of two minutes if that and um and you know what that was just like okay we're done my cervix did bleed a little bit more than what they wanted on the right hand side so we kind of waited to make sure that that day down before we left 
But once all that was good, like they was everybody just kind of cleaned up the stuff, da -da -da -da, got everything around, moved me from the surgical table to the bed and rolled me back. And I stood up, I got dressed. My cousin came in to pick me up. My doctor came in and showed me my pictures and talked to me. And I was out. So my surgery started at 9.03 a.m. I was home by 10 a.m. And I came home and I took a nap because I did not sleep last night, honestly. Like I said, I was so nervous. I didn't sleep for crap last night. And I, I'm not a nap person. I don't sleep during the day. But I came home and I took a nap. And then I woke up and was like, oh, I feel great. Let me do the video. It is uncomfortable down there. I'm not really cramping. I'm bleeding a little bit. But I was on my period when I went in there anyway. So I'm like, this ain't, this is even less than what my period was. Um, it's a little... You can tell people was up there messing around. Like, it's kind of uh, not sore, like, ow, ah, 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 but just kind of uncomfortable. But I'm not in any pain, and I feel great. I feel fine, 100% fine. I don't, I don't feel any type of way. So if I would have gotten sedated, I would have been in that hospital for hours recovering. And I would probably feel groggy and nauseated and yucky right now. So I'm very, very happy with my choice to not get sedated. Now, to give you a little bit of background on why I got the DNC in the first place, I have very painful very very painful and heavy periods and have for a while I've had um, a couple of times where I like bled for like a week in between periods and then um, I had two ultrasounds that showed some um, calcifications on the endometrium lining and they didn't know that they were like a fibroid a polyp or like what they were and because there were two different ultrasounds from like a year apart by two different texts with two different radiologists and they were still showing that there was something there of undetermined clinical significance or something like that my doctor was like you know we could do an endometrial biopsy but if we're gonna go in there anyways and do this like it might be good to get a sample of all the cells from all around the uterus so we don't mix anything and then also the dilation curatage could hopefully help with some of your your future periods making them not as painful or as heavy so that is why I got the procedure done everything seemed to look normal um, under the camera but they're still gonna do it for testing she told me that the results will be back in a day or two which I think is amazing um, and then I'll know for sure like that everything came back good, but I hope this helps you and uh, I hope this helps you if you're kind of just deciding like oh if you should get something done and not everyone's experience is the same and not everyone's pain tolerance is the same. I have a high type pain tolerance. I don't mind pain. I, I don't, I don't want to say I enjoy it, but like, like I like getting tattoos because I like the way it feels kind of thing. Um, but honestly, like, I think it's really about making sure you have a great doctor. My doctor has five star reviews, not four and a half, not 4.9, five star reviews. Like, she was amazing. The one who did the dilation curatage, um, the doctor who did my wisdom teeth extraction has great reviews. The only bad things he has in his reviews is his bed sign manner isn't the greatest. Um, but he's just kind of like cutthroat, in, out, whatever. And I think that's maybe why. And then the guy, the gastroenterologist, gastro, whatever, him. He has great reviews too, so I think making sure that the hospital you're going to has great reviews, the doctor has great reviews, if you know anybody personal who can refer them, um, or has, you know, talk to people who have had them in the past, and that is a huge part of it. I think also knowing your own pain tolerance, um, and I'm trying to think of what else. I don't know, I think those are the main things. I mean, just, just being honest with yourself, but honestly, I think having gone through these different procedures, I feel like the, um... The sedation is unnecessary. Because even when I was talking to the anesthesiologist, I was like, what are the benefits of getting put out? Getting sedated, whether it's general or local or whatever. It's just pain relief. That is the only... It's not going to make you heal any faster. It's not going to make the procedure go any better. It's not going to... It literally is just pain relief. And for me, I can deal with two minutes of pain. I just don't want that added risk that sedation provides. And I also don't want the added recovery time. So for me this is my choice and I'm happy with my choice and so far so good I think I've made good choices and um, and I hope that my experience can help you make good choices for you as well whether you decide to get um, general anesthesia or not or if you decide because they give you so many options like fentanyl, demerol, freaking uh, propofol <laughs> like whatever things to put you to sleep things to put you in a twilight sleep things to give you like a spine they offered me a spinal block um, no so yeah thanks for watching hit subscribe below let me know if there's any other videos like you want to hear about or anything okay